Welcome to Healing Generations, a podcast creating a dialogue uplifting the importance of healing, strengthening, and supporting our communities, and that addresses the disparities and inequities in communities of color. Healing Generations is brought to you by the Healing Generations Institute, a collaborative initiative of the National Compadres Network and the Brotherhood of Elders. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on our new releases. Welcome to the Healing Generation podcast. My name is Ariel Jimenez, and I will be one of your hosts for today's segment. Today's segment is focused on youth voice, and we will get an opportunity to hear from some of the current Jovenoble participants. And actually, our participants today attend a, a high school here in San Jose called Oak Grove High School, which is located on the south side of San Jose here in the Bay Area. And actually, we highlight that campus because on campus, we have some amazing circle keepers. So before we get started, I want to highlight our, our Comadre Val and our Compadre Ray that are doing amazing work there and have not only some amazing circles, but some amazing young folks as well. So today we're going to get to hear from two of them. But before we do that, I want to pass it over to Alejandro, who is going to be my co-star and will be able to guide today's conversation. So Alejandro, welcome. Um, let's get ready. My name is Alejandro Baron Sosuna. I'm one of the co-hosts of the youth portion of the Healing Generations podcast. I'm very excited to be doing the podcast today with these two youth. Um, when I reached out across the district, who would be some of the best youth to interview? Ms. Val right away was like, you got to get these two youth on. And I was like, perfect, let's do it. So welcome to Kai and Leo. First off, we're going to start how we usually start in group, which is a little conocimiento, so a little who are you, where you come from, anything that you want to share. So my name is Leomar Noves. I'm a junior at Oak Grove. My family is all from Mexico, but I was born here. My pops is from um, the DF, and my mom is from Ixtapa Guerrero. I play football, and I do track and field. But aside from that, there's not, not, much, not much to say. Hello, my name is Malachi Dominguez. I play football, rugby, I throw shot put in this case. I'm Samaro Samoan and a Mexican. My dad's from Michoacan, and my, my mom was born on the island of Guam. That's a beautiful mix right there, man. Thank you for, for both of you for introducing yourselves in that way. Because for us, you know, culture is important. And Kai, I'm going to come back to you in a minute. I played rugby as well. So I played rugby in high school and I played rugby at college. So we, we might need to have a, a rugby conversation. Uh, but <laughs> let me start with Leomar first. You know, you said you're from here, but your parents come from Mexico. What, what does that mean to for you to have Mexican roots? Like, tell me a little bit about your culture and, and a little bit of the pride there. I think it's cool because... Uh, me and my mom, we consistently, well, not super consistently, but every here and there, we'll head back to uh, her homeland. So we call it the motherland. And we'll head back to Ixtapa, where, like, all the beaches and stuff over there. And uh, my grandma's currently over here. But um, a few years back, we headed over there, and then we brought my grandma back home with us. And she has a house over there that we're renovating, and we're going to rent out and stuff. And it's, like, it's cool to be able to go over there and learn and meet all the people from the Colonia and the mm -hmm. whole street and everything and it's um i think I've, I've learned a lot from going back over there and i'm um, looking at people and all the connections that my mom's had with family and friends and learning at different places like at the beaches or mm -hmm. at corner stores and in any place that we've gone my mom knows them which is crazy to me yeah and then they, they all have something to teach something to say so it's um it's cool it's cool to be a part of a hundred percent, man. Especially when you hear people say, oh, I'm from this colonia, I'm from that pueblo, I'm from this tierra. Or even when they say, you know, I'm going to go back to the motherland, the homeland. Um, it, it really just speaks to the connection that they have from their roots. So for us, that's important. Um, Kai, real quick to you, you said you're a little bit of a blend. Tell us a little bit of like, what is what does your culture mean to you? And just like the, the richness from there. Man, it's, uh, it's super rich. Like I got to learn both sides of my like my cultural background and like. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know a lot about the island side, but and I know a lot about the Mexican side because, like, I grew up more on my my dad's side and, like, all the richness I came from it, all the blessings I've learned. And, like, I learned how to grow up and uh, be a positive young man through my pops. And, like, I got to thank him for that. You know, thank you both for, for talking about that because I think for us, culture is important, especially when you come here, right, to the United States. Sometimes we get disconnected from our roots. Sometimes there's like a level of pride of having both of it, right? Like Mexican-American, Chicano, trying to live both of those worlds. Kai, you talked about your pops. And for us, you know, having healthy men 
shows what it means to to be an honorable man, like that's important. You know, we learned about that in the groups. But what is one thing that your dad has taught you that that you hold with pride? For me, one thing that my pops has taught me is be sports. Uh, just be honorable and like treat everybody with respect. Like when you're meeting somebody, shake their hand and just treat them mm-hmm. how you want to be treated. And, uh, I got thank you for that because like every person I met, I made a great impression on. And like that's what I try to do every time I meet somebody because like you don't know where that friendship could take you and like all that stuff could lead to like benefits throughout your life. Mm. You know, I will say the first thing I emailed back to Miss Val was your youth are so respectful because even the way you guys were texting, emailing back, you just had such like respectful, professional ways of emailing that I was like, oh, my goodness, our men could never. I'm just playing. <laughs> um, but no, thank you so much for sharing. Uh, speaking of lessons that you've learned from men in your life, from women in your life, we want to know a little bit more about your experiences in group. So I'll start with Leo on this one. What's a lesson that you've learned from being in Hove Noble? My favorite lesson that I've learned is how to manage my uh, my, my anger issues, more like self-control. Mm. I feel like Hove Noble has been really helpful in terms of discipline and self-control. I mean, when I when I had first gone into Hove Noble, I, I would like, I wouldn't know how to control myself. And like my anger showed up in like negative ways that I didn't like, but um, being able to keep it respectful and calm uh, and collected when when something like ticks me off or upsets me, I feel like I have a better way to respond now and better way of thinking before I act mm. uh, now than I did before. You know, one of the stories. My dad, Mario Osuna, always tells when we're getting ready to give people their palabra shirts is, I never want to see one of these on the news. So if you're <laughs> going to if you're gonna go do something, you don't have that control to leave it home. So I think self-control is definitely one of the important lessons we learned from Hova Noble. Kai, how about you? What's a lesson you've learned? Well, like a very important lesson that I learned is to let my emotions flow. You know, as like a young man, we're taught to like, keep our emotions inside and just be tough. Like, that's the example of a man. And like, through all the noble that it's taught me to let them flow and just not hold things back. Because once we hold things back, it all piles up and it's, it builds to that point where it, it, you're just going to explode. And like, I'm th- mm-hmm. I'm glad that Val and Mr. Ramirez taught me that because as a young, like a young boy, like I used to just let my emotions pile up and like, I would just explode. And like, when I didn't have my output football or rugby, like, I would just be angry all the time. I would lock myself in the room. And that's one thing I have to thank Mr. Ramirez and Ms. Bell for teaching me at a young age. And I think that that's important, right? I think both of what you both said is interconnected in the sense of one of the few emotions that we're allowed to to experience is anger. When we're angry, it's acceptable. But the moment that we start feeling other emotions, we start getting judged, Right. And especially for athletes, I could be angry on that rugby field. I could be angry on that football field and it's almost glorified. But then when that same anger and that same like violence and physicalness is expressed anywhere else, then I'm punished for it. Mm -hmm. So sometimes there's like a level of confusion when we're stuck in those two different worlds. Why am I getting praised for that violence over here and that aggression over here? And then I'm getting punished for that same aggression over here. Like I know when I was younger, I was confused by that. Like I got named captain, but I got suspended. Like what's what's up with that? <laughs> so I appreciate that. You know, talking about circle, let me get Leo to to answer first. How did you get introduced to circle? Like how was that introduction? Like what did someone tell you to show up? Were you volunteered to show up? Were you referred? And how was that? Like how how did you experience the first time you sat in circle? Um, this is actually one of my favorite stories to tell. Because I had met Mr. Ray first. I didn't know who Ms. Val was until I had already uh, sat in circle. When I sat in circle, that's when I met Ms. Val. But I was a freshman and I didn't know how to keep up with uh, my grades and I was irresponsible. And I was having struggles. So Mr. Ramirez, I call him Mr. Ray, but Mr. Ramirez had gone to my class and pulled me out. And he introduced himself and he talked to me about my grades. And he let me know that if I didn't if I didn't get my grade up in two weeks, he was going to have to call my mom and let her know that I was slipping and, and he was going to have to have that talk with her. 
But me at that point, I had learned how to like sweet talk my way through through grades and through mm. teachers and counselors and all that. So I would always just get on the good side of them, have no call to my parents, and I'd, I'd slip through with like minimum effort, and teacher would just pass me. But uh, Mr. Ray, he he saw like he saw right through that. He knew what it was like to be in my position, and mm-hmm. the first thing he told me, he said, "I know what it's like for brown folk like us to be in school like this and and to experience life the same way you do. I've been in the same boat as you." And he offered that sense of relatability that I didn't have with other counselors and teachers like that. And I Mm -hmm. felt understood. And that's one of the things that stuck out to me about Mr. Ray. So long story short, I didn't get my grade up and he honored his word. Mm -hmm. And he called my mom and I got in trouble. But instead of me not wanting to talk to him, I I respected him for it. Mm -hmm. He let me know of this thing called Hova Noble and he asked me if I was if I'd be interested in it. And at first, I didn't know how to feel, but I, I said, yeah. And I think about a couple months later, uh, maybe my sophomore year, going into my sophomore year. So last year, I sat in circle and going in when I first sat, I was I was iffy about it because mm-hmm. I knew some of the some of the dudes that were in there with us. And I didn't think it was it was going to go great, mm-hmm. um, considering that I didn't have a good history with some of the dudes in there. Yeah. But it was cool going through it. And now I'm closer with those people that I never, I never would have thought I'd be close with. Yeah. It's a, it's a trip. How things work out, huh? Yeah. But, but I'm, but I'm glad you joined it. I'm I'm glad you took that leap of faith and hopefully you didn't get too much in trouble with your moms. Cause you know, <laughs> he kept his word, but I know sometimes going home like that, he really, he really did what he said he was going to do <laughs> and it could work both in good and bad. So I, I appreciate that story. Um, Kai, what about you, man? How, how did you get connected? How was that introduction for you? And, and tell us, tell us a little bit about your story. So I met, uh, Mr. Ramirez in a uh, Island group and I was like the first time I met him and like, my brother introduced me to him and like, I was like, I caught the vibe with him and like, I was like, damn, he's hella cool. He's, he got the same uh, culture as me, he's Samoro too. So like right then and there we clicked. And mm-hmm. then, uh, my brother had told me about Hovind Noble cause he's a former graduate. And, uh, I had went to his graduation and, uh, I had met Ms. Vell and I started talking to him. He was like, Oh, are you going to come out to Hovind Noble? I know you got stories to tell. Like your brother, like he, she shares a lot of great stories. So I was like, I started thinking about it and like the next school year came and I was just like, man, I got so much on my mind and like, I just need someone to talk to. And Ms. Bell was there and like, I joined that first day and like, I, I caught the vibe and I was just like, man, like this could really help out. And like, I haven't been excited for anything like that since like freshman year. And like, it really brought joy to my life because like I was learning new things. Like I could reach out to new people and like, it gave me a new like sensibility on life and like, it made me become a strong individual and like they guided me to believe in like a lot of things. And like, uh, I got closer to God through them and like, mm-hmm. I got to thank them for that. Mm. You know, hearing how youth get connected is always one of my favorite part. I know last podcast we just had was, um, Edgar Sandoval and he wasn't even supposed to be in group until Ariel caught him on a, caught him on a bad day, um, walking into class late. So I hearing everyone's stories about how they got connected and staying connected is some of my favorite things to hear about. When talking about group, you know, there's always a moment that really stands out to us, something that we think back on, like, oh, that was my favorite moment in group, or that was the most memorable thing to me. Like, I know we always talk about the young men's graduation over the summer, last summer, when Edgar and Arlen got to walk the youth down and they were all holding hands, smiling, like looking all happy and shit. Um, so I want to ask you, we'll start with Kai this time because we've been starting with Leo a lot. What has been your most memorable experience in the circle? Probably the graduation. My family and everybody was there and like they got to experience the circle for themselves and like they got to get the blessing of Mr. Ramirez and Ms. Bell and their teachings. And they also got like a little background about like my hurt and like mm. I got to like cry. And, like it was just like, like a crazy moment because like Never in like a million years would I think like I would cry in a bunch of like in front of a bunch of people's families and just like my family too. And like to see my mom cry, my pops cry, got very big for me. And like the hugs I got afterwards, it just made me feel like deeper rooted with my family. 
So I've never felt something like that. And like, that was just a very like, special moment for me. Let me um, ask a follow up question to that, because I think what you just said was important. I don't know if I would have had that courage in high school to let my parents peek behind the curtain on my hurt. I don't know if I was mature enough or brave enough or strong enough for that. Then tell me a little bit more about that. Like what gave you the courage to say, I'm going to let them see my, my hurt. Mm. It was really uh miss bell. Like she really made me like want to express myself and like get my feelings out there. And like when that day came on graduation and I got to like show my story and explain how I felt, it just made the feelings just flow through and just, I don't know. It was like happy, but sad tears. And like, I really got to thank her for that. Cause like, I don't think I would be like able to show that courage and like strength of this cry. Cause like, I've been like so isolated before. Like, I don't know. It's crazy. That's important. It's funny that you say that, that you needed someone else to walk with you in that journey. Cause sometimes when, when we are hurting, we automatically go to isolation. I don't want to see no one see me hurt. I don't want to see my tears. Sometimes I see it as weakness and things like that. So I could appreciate that. Um, and sometimes it takes somebody else to walk with us in that darkness so that we could go see the light. Right. So I think, and I think that's, that's a big teaching about circle that we're not alone in that process. Mm. You know, you did something that I haven't even been able to do in our own group. And I've been running group for almost two years now. And last group I finally was given my talking staff. And I wanted to cry, but I was like, nope, can't do it. So um, you definitely have courage that I hope to have one day. Um, Leo, same question for you. What's a memorable experience that you've taken away from Circulo? I think I, I agree with Kai in the sense that the bridging was probably one of my, my favorite parts. It was it was different. It was one big circle with all of our parents involved. But I think my favorite part of Circle is the being able to open up with people that I feel I feel safe with. I mm. think um, one specific part was opening up to the group about how I'm still carrying baggage from like this thing that happened almost a year ago and being able to draw that out and talk to them about it and letting them know that I'm not like uh, well, I wasn't in the right state of mind at the time where mm. I was stuck up on on uh, revenge and and standing up for myself and and just uh, returning hate, but they were all there for me, and mm. they all they all gave me uh, help and solutions to to how to get by it. I know uh, sending blessings out to to Josh Wells, who's a part of our group. He mm. helped me big time in that sense, where he let mm. me know that it was normal to feel that way. And to want to react with uh, hatred and with negativity and and all that, but ultimately choosing the high road. And mm -hmm. um, that, that was one of my favorite parts. It, I cried to them and it gave me a sense of peace. It felt like a, a weight lifted off my chest. You know, uh, revenge feels good. I'll be honest, man. I ain't going, I'm not going to front. Revenge feels good, but healing feels better. Mm. And I don't know if I would have understood that when I was younger, because getting someone back at that moment with that anger and those emotions, I would have been good there. But being able to sit in circle and heal and forgive other people, forgive myself for experiences was just how you described it. It was a, it was a sense of peace. So I, I appreciate you saying that. And thank you for sharing even, you know, Josh with us, because sometimes we forget to lift up the people that taught us those lessons. So let me ask you, Kai, you know, who is someone that has walked with you in this journey that you want to lift up right now, whether it's your pops, whether it's grandma, whether it's someone in the circle, one of the circle keepers. If you could think of one person to give a shout out to, to give, you know, what some some of the younger folks says, I want to give them their flowers. I want to lift them up. Who is one person that has walked with you in that journey that you want to lift up right now and why? Well, I got to uh, bring up my brother, Matthias. Cause he's the one that brought me into group and like, uh, he saw me go from like a, a young freshman making dumb decisions to a junior, like making decisions that not even like people that are 20 years old making. Like he's really been my rock and like he's been solid with me. And like he taught me a lot of things. Like, uh, he's experienced a lot of hurt. And like, even with that, like he's taught, he's like talked to me about those things and like just to feel his hurt and like, 
get to know his experiences like it, it brought me a it brought a shine into our relationship and like i i can trust him with anything like i'm not i can say that i love my brother for real and i'm a, I'm my brother's keeper and that's like a big thing because like a lot of people nowadays like they say they're their brother's keeper but they're really not and like uh mm-hmm. that's what i'm that's one thing i'm glad to say like we got each other back to the end that's real you know, my, my younger sister, my little sister, I always call her my little sister, even though she's grown now as a child <laughs> and, you know, all that stuff. Uh, but she runs the, the young women's circles now. On the same high school, I run the young men's circle. You know, and um, I've gained And they from like her, her better. I'm sure. and, and, and people like her better. It's all right. <laughs> I like her better than me, too. Uh, but, you know, that connection that you're talking about, no one's going to know what that feels like minus you two. And there's no words that could give it justice to the feeling and and what you feel when you know someone's got your back 100%. So I appreciate that. Leo, to you, who is someone that you want to lift up uh, and why? I feel like it's definitely Mr. Mr. Ray, Mr. Ramirez. Um, him being a person like uh, similar to Kai and Matthias, uh, the person that introduced me to Circle, I feel like Mr. Ray is, is like, a, like, like an uncle to me. Because he's, uh, like I said, um, he's the first relatable um, school worker that I've been, that I've been able to connect with. Nobody else really made me feel like like I was seen. Everybody else, when I was getting talked to or threatened to get in trouble, it felt like they were just doing their job. Like I was just another kid. Mm-hmm. But Mr. Ramirez, he allowed me to, to feel seen. And well, it was a cool experience to be able to have him share stories with us and Mr. Amir has been the person that he is. He's hopped in a circle and he shared his own stories and his own hurt with us too. And it's allowed me and I, I believe um, all of us to be able to open up more and feel uh, safer opening up with him, knowing that, that he's struggling too, because I feel like um, a lot of adults, they want to act like they're perfect and try to mm-hmm. put on this front. Like if they have no struggles, and uh, try to, I guess, influence or or give us a lesson on how to act or how to feel without us being able to learn from them. But Mr. Ramirez, he's he's heavy on uh, leading by example for our groups. And that's why I have um, full respect for him and why he's uh, I give him his flowers on going with me on this journey. You know, we always have people, especially at Foothill to a small school, ask if they could come and watch us do group and ariel's always very strict with them that you know you can't just it's not a zoo like you can't just watch them like you're spectating them you have to sit in and participate and give them the same energy that we're asking them to give us so it takes a lot for someone to be willing to do that especially an adult so i appreciate both of you for lifting up the people that you lifted up you talked about mr ramirez helping you feel seen and for some people, that's like feeling sacred. The moment I felt sacred was when I was first seen. So I want to ask each of you, we'll start with Leo. When did you realize you were sacred? Or if you realized you were sacred yet? I feel like I realized I was sacred once I met Miss Val. Mm-hmm. I feel um, seen. I definitely felt seen first with Mr. with Mr. Ray. But once I got introduced to Ms. Val and we started up Circle, being able to have Ms. Val also open up with us and uh, her being the only uh, woman in the group, it gave us two sides and allowed us to grow. I wouldn't say faster, but I think grow stronger. Hmm. Um, it's more of a more of an influence, just like Mr. Ray. So I think they're like the perfect combo. Um, Ms. Val's openness and her being able to help us is what made me feel sacred Mm -hmm. her Mm -hmm. teachings combined with mr ray and all of us together led me to realize and feel like oh i'm sacred i I have value and i think it's because of her and mr ray that um i feel proud to be one the concept of sacredness i think it's it's hard for a lot of people to grasp they hear the word sacred and it almost it's almost intimidating. But the fact that you equated sacredness to value is important because I, I feel that we don't lose our value. 
we're sacred from the moment we're born. And even though life might not be good to some versus others, we as people never lose our value. And I think some people forget that. One of my mentors, Ozzy Cruz, says it's easy for us to see the sacredness in a two or three year old. And it's harder to see that same sacredness in a 17, 18 or 15 year old that's acting out. Mm -hmm. So the fact that you equated that to value and the fact that Ms. Val is the one that taught you that, like it it clicks for me because I know her. I know Mr. Ray. And I know the duality that they both carry and they're perfect circle keepers together. Like that balance. I love being in those spaces with them. So I just want to thank you for for sharing that with us because uh, we all have value. Sometimes we just forget to recognize that. Kai, how about you? When did you realize you were sacred? It was about uh, last year. My freshman year, I was just messing around. I uh, got myself in trouble and got kicked out of my old school. And, um, Miss Bell, like, really helped me and, like, pushed me through it. And, like, there was days where, like, we did, like, these cards. And, like, I, like, Lone Wolf kept on popping up. And, like, I would, like, have, like, visions of a wolf. And, like, I can say that's from, like, my Native American backslides. Like, it's my ancestors telling me, like, oh, you're sacred. You're on this journey. And, like, mm-hmm. you're not alone, but you're that Lone Wolf and you need to push through it. And that's really one thing she taught me because, like, Miss Val's like our mama bear in a way. Like she, she's like yeah. another mom. So like she made me realize that like you, I'm on a, on a, I'm on a journey and like I just need to follow through no matter what happens. And like that day it made me like realize that like I can't let nothing hold me back. Like if I'm feeling down, just push through it. If I'm feeling up, be feeling up. And, uh, I gotta thank her for that. Like give her her flowers for that. And, uh, I thank her for making me feel sacred. Show me the way to be like a respectful and just like a loving young man. You know, I hope Ms. Val is listening to this episode with a box of tissues right next to her. Because I already know that y'all are going to make her cry with all your shout outs. I just want to say that a little thank you guys for sharing that. And it's true. It's true that we get lifted up while we're still here. It's true that we get lifted up while we're still in connection with folks. Because it's easy for us to remember folks and lift them up when they're not here. But while they're still here, how can we still live them up, right? And maybe give them back a little bit of an ounce of what they poured into us. Because I guarantee you, man, Ms. Val is a loving person. You could be acting out or acting up, and she's still going to love on you. So I, I, I appreciate that. You know, another question, because the, the sacred one always gets people. And sometimes we don't even know how to answer it. The other question that's equally hard to answer but equally meaningful is how do you define healing? Right. Because a lot of people ask, uh, what does healing mean to you? And everybody answers that differently. So let me go with Kai first. Um, If someone were to ask you, how do you define healing? What would you say to that? To me, uh, defining healing, you notice the baggage that you have and you Mm -hmm. take all of it and like you like you go through it in your head and like you just get rid of it. Like you notice it, but you get rid of it because. All that stuff is just going to hold you back. And that's one thing that uh, Mr. Ramirez told me. Like, you just got to let go and, like, wait for new experience to come to you and, like, uh, take those blessings as you go and all those lessons as you go because you could get hurt no matter what. Like, it's always going to happen. But you're also going to get loved at the same time. That balance and that duality, man. Yeah. We're all going to have baggage in life. But how long we hold on to the baggage, that's up to us. Mm. So, um Leo, to you, how would you define healing? The way I define healing is um, kind of touching the topic of earlier uh, with peace. I feel there's a lot of things buried, especially for men. Uh, One thing we we talk about a lot in circle is this armor. And when we're in circle, it's like we're allowed to take off that metal plate, the armor. And there's a lot of things buried from youth, from, from the past, from... From everywhere where circles allowed us to to heal and for me heal is talk about it and being able to reflect learn kind of why I act the way I do that's what circles done for me it's allowed me to find a peace of mind in my questions just that where I go why am I acting this way why do I feel this way it's allowed me to answer questions about myself and I feel like that's what healing is to me mm. That's one thing we got to thank Mr. Ramirez for. Because, like, coming from a, a man's point of view, like, he's had his uh his hurt and his uh love given to him. But, like, 
he showed us how to just get rid of that hurt and just like do it the right way instead of just letting go because like it's always gonna come back if you just let it go Mm. and uh he made us like realize how to be a young man and just deal with it because like that stuff is gonna keep piling up if you don't get rid of it and just like we really got to give thanks to him because he's just like another father figure or like the uncle like how leo mar said and like uh big thanks to him Mm. You know, I think an important thing is that when we think of trauma, we think we just bury it down and forget about it. Like once it happened, it's done. And then, I mean, I know this happened to me recently where I was just sitting down on my phone and it hit me like a truck. And I was like, oh, I'm not ready to deal with that right now. But even that, the realization of what you've gone through, what you're going through, the scars that you've had to dealt with. And just acknowledging that it's there is a form of healing itself. I think Kai said it perfectly earlier when he was talking about when he realized he was sacred in the sense of it's a journey. There's no final destination to healing. So I think that's important. I want to thank both of you for your answers. One of our last questions we're going to be asking today is one of my favorite questions. And both of you get a chance to answer it. If one of you doesn't want to answer it, that's okay. Um, But the question is, if you had a microphone... In this microphone, everyone in the world could hear what you're about to say. What's one issue that you'd like to lift up? Let's go ahead and start with Kai. That's a hard question. No pressure. You're about to solve the world's problem right now, but no pressure. (laughs) If I had a microphone and the whole world was hearing, I would say get closer to God. Hmm. Because your religion is like, takes you very far and like just reading the bible all the lesson that you learn through them is just like it's big it's like mm-hmm. it's like circle but in like old-fashioned teaching and like you realize how to be a man how to be a good human being and like even in the bible says like no one's perfect mm-hmm. like jesus and god's the only people that are perfect but we want to go up to their level and try to match them but we got to know ourselves that we're not better than them there's always going to be someone above you and there's uh, all the hate and like negativity is just through like people like not believing like mm. there is something better out there and like God has a plan for you and like people just need to work towards it and that's just like a big thing in our community like uh, especially with like Latinos like everybody gets lost and uh, this, I just want to praise God and just want to uplift everybody that has hurt and like everybody that's listening right now like I want you guys to like really dig deep and uh, try to connect closer to God because he can get you to uh, places you don't think you'll ever be. Mm. You know, my grandpa used to always tell me growing up, if people lived life the way the Bible is actually written, instead of adding that extra hate into it, the world would be a beautiful place. So I just want to thank you for your answer. Leo, how about you? Kind of similar to your feedback right now is actually more... um. It's like it's a really old statement. I feel like it's it's cliche, but more just uh, peace and love. If you don't have anything nice to say, don't say it. I feel like now, especially um, still showing up, even for example, like today where people just like to hate for no reason. And I feel I feel like the media allows people to like they feel like it's normal or like quirky and funny. But um what people don't see is how it affects it affects others, and I feel like just being nice to people is is like something cool to do. Earlier on in the week, we had this guy come to school, just start handing out chips, and all he asked was just to throw up a peace sign and spread love, mm-hmm. and all and you get chips. I I just think it's it's important to be kind and just spread love to all around you because you never know how how it would affect somebody. It could. It could lift somebody's day just by just by being nice or complimenting somebody. But I was just kidding. <laughs> That's what I hear, man. People on social media, like they get all personal. They'd be throwing low blows and, and you know, all this hate speech. And at the end, when you see them in person, like, nah, man, I was just kidding. So social media got a lot of people feeling brave. <laughs> they think they got superpowers on the uh, behind the text. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> They do, they do. Um, but, you know, that's that's important, too. I think uh, with, with social media being so accessible to everybody, it's easy to spread hate. Easy to hate on people. Easy to bring people down. So I like that example. Here's some chips, man. All I need is a peace sign and a smile. Like, those are free. You know, share a smile. Those are free. Um, 
I had a coworker used to always say that it irritated me, but you know, it makes sense now. <laughs> uh, so, you know, we're getting to the close of our podcast here of our today's episode. And I just want to thank both of y'all for sharing the way that y'all have shared, man, between the people that you brought into the space and the teachings they, they taught you to your experiences in and out of circle. Um, I know I've definitely benefited from those stories and those teachings. So I thank you personally, and I'm sure anybody that's going to listen to this podcast um, is going to thank you as well. Mm. But before, you know, we close up, we just want to give you guys the mic. Um, is there any closing remarks that you have for people, whether it's a teaching, a quote, something that maybe you didn't get to share? Um, there's no question associated with this. Uh, just any closing remarks. If anybody wants to go first, go for it. Yeah, I just wanted to add how um, I've had this conversation with this other person, how it costs nothing to be nice. Mm -hmm. And they hit me back with, well, it also costs nothing to be mean. But at the same time, it also hurts nobody to be nice. Mm -hmm. But if you're spreading hate, it's always going to hurt one person just to make yourself feel better, or to make yourself laugh or make other people laugh. But it hurts somebody. And being nice, it makes you feel good knowing that you made somebody else feel good. Mm. And I feel like I struggle with that sometimes, too. When I'm in a funk, I just I feel like mad dogging everybody or being mean. Mm -hmm. But then I'll have some kid bump into me and be all scared. I'm like, no, like, it's OK. And then <laughs> I'll just like I'll give them a little fist bump or something. And then their mood will change like like a like a sigh of relief. And it'll it'll change my perspective on on the day and how I'm doing. Yeah. I, I liked how you framed that. But Kai, to you, uh, any closing remarks, man? No question associated. Just, you know, what do you want to share with us as we close out? Well, like one thing is uh, praise God and just uh, connect deeper with the roots and learn who you truly are. And like, uh, mm. remember your people and like what they did to get here and like how they pushed for you to be where you're at and use that power and just empower yourself and just push to be the best person you could be. Because that's the only thing we, we can do unless we just go down. Mm -hmm. 100%. You said something that's key. Learn where you came from. Because I think a lot of us got disconnected in that process. And we don't know where we came from. So we have to actively go and look for that. Actively go and learn. It, it comes easier to some than others. Um, so I, I, I liked how you framed that. Um, Alejandro, closing this up. Any closing remarks you got for us? Just thank you. Thank you to Leo and Kai for being here today. Uh, to Miss Val for recommending these amazing uh, young men to us. Um, couldn't have think of better people for this podcast. So thank you so much. Thank you to our listeners for always listening. My co-host, Ariel. But nah, just thank you. Um, I hope everyone has a good day. Thank you, AB, for, for closing us up in a good way. Um, just want to shout out both of you. You know, you, you both gave a lot of props to a lot of people in terms of who's walked with you, in terms of who's poured into you, in terms of who's taught you things. And I guarantee you that if you talk to Ms. Val, Mr. Ramirez, and everybody else that you lifted up, they've given that same amount of love to other people. But it's you that put in the work. Mm -hmm. It's you that decided to show up and be respectful. It's you that decided to come back to Circle and live those teachings. So as much as you're going to give other people credit, I just want to take a moment and give both of you all credit for the way that not only you interact, but for the way that you carry yourself in all your spaces. And thank you for everything that you share with us today. So, you know, for our listeners, um, I hope you continue to listen. You can find us on uh, Facebook under the National Composites Network. You could find us on Instagram and Twitter under La Cultura Cura. And definitely continue to listen to the Healing Generation podcast as we continue to connect with some amazing young men like Hi and Leo. Thank you all. For more information about Healing Generations and the Healing Generations Institute, visit nationalcompadresnetwork.org and be sure to subscribe to stay up to date with our new releases.